What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the biggest and best daily baseball show on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Dustin May, who had six strikeouts in five and a third innings, giving up only two hits. It wasn't particularly nasty this outing, but did have these filthy curveballs. He was up against Hayden Wisniewski, who only had 1K on this sweeper and gave up three runs in four and a third innings. Merrill Kelly had 7Ks in five innings, giving up four runs. He had this painted two-seamer and this slider and curveball. And he faced off against Joe Musgrove, who made his return and looked solid with 6Ks in five innings, giving up three runs and relied on his changeup, his cutters, and his nasty curveball. Chad Cool whipped in these nasty sliders on his way to 5Ks in three and two-thirds innings. Yes, that was a cool whip joke. And he outdueled Pablo Lopez, who had this fastball and changeup, and had 6Ks in four innings, but gave up five runs. Wade Miley had this painted curveball, and this paint-ish fastball. He had 3Ks in five innings, giving up two runs. Zach Plezak had this changeup and had 5Ks in five innings, giving up three runs. And he battled Braxton Garrett, who had 3Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up one run, had these curveballs and his mean sliders. Shintaro Fujinami had this absolutely painted 101-mile-an-hour fastball. So you can see the stuff is there. But he only had 2Ks in two and a third innings because he gave up eight runs, which is a pretty standard outing from an A starting pitcher. He was outdueled by Andrew Heaney, who had these elevated fastballs on his way to four strikeouts and six innings, giving up two runs. As you notice, Heaney has a pretty low arm slot, and he also sinks with his front leg. So you can see how he's kind of throwing uphill, which allows him to get a good attack angle to the plate and get whiffs because hitters swing slightly up. So the plane of his fastball doesn't intersect with the swing plane of the bat for very long. Framber Valdez had 9Ks in 7 innings, giving up 3 runs. He had this curveball, cutter, and sinker. And he faced Kyle Wright, who had this elevated changeup and this low strike. On his way to 2 strikeouts in 5 innings, giving up 3 runs. Shane Bieber had these knuckle curves, painted fastball, and a slider. He had 4Ks in 5 and 2 thirds innings, giving up 3 runs. Not a typical Shane Bieber outing. He definitely struggled. He was opposed by Devin Smeltzer, who K'd the side with this and had 3Ks in 4 innings, giving up only one run. David Peterson had these sliders and even got a sword on a slider, and he had 8Ks in 5 innings, but gave up 7 runs. He was outdueled by Logan Webb, who had 8Ks in 7 innings, giving up only 2 earned runs, and had these change-ups, including this one that I loved, because it came after this 2-seamer that probably was a sword on McNeil, and then got him with this change-up. But his filthiest pitch was this two-seamer that ran 21 inches. It was so nasty that Joey Bart couldn't catch it. Look at this sick movement. If you saw my video on sweepers, this is totally a seam-shifted wake two-seamer, which means the seams really helps it take off. Christopher Sanchez had five Ks in four and a third innings, giving up three runs. He had these dirty change-ups, an unintentional dirty Sanchez reference. And he battled against Kyle Freeland, who had 6Ks in 6 innings, giving up 4 runs. He had this slider and almost painted fastball. Joey Wentz had his 95-mile-an-hour fastball going and his cutter. And had this great balk where he Wentz home and Wentz the first base at the same time. Now, I know defining a balk is pretty tough, but that's one. He faced off against Kyle Gibson, who was brilliant with 11 Ks in six of the third innings, giving up only one run on two hits. He had this mix of sweepers and two-seamers, and look at that nasty movement. A great outing from Kyle Gibson. Luis Castillo had eight Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, and he had his usual mix of fastballs and change-ups, and I always love his fist-pump K strut. Miles Michaelis had this pretty curveball and had 4Ks in 5 and a third innings, giving up 3 runs. 43-year-old Dick Mountain had these curveballs and fastball and had 7Ks in 5 innings, giving up only 1 run. You go, Rich Hill. Alec Manoa looked back to his old self. He went 7 innings, had 5Ks, gave up only 2 hits and no runs. He had this 95-mile-an-hour 6 sinker. I mean, look at this movement on that pitch. 
This one ran 20 inches, and his slider was also back to being wicked. He even got a sword on a changeup. And I did some overlays of Manoa's two-seamer and slider because they're some of my favorite overlays. Because you can really see how much his pitches move. And when he has that movement, it is so hard for a hitter to square him up. He faced off against Garrett Cole, who only had four Ks in five and two-thirds innings but gave up no runs, and his ERA is now .79. He used this slider and fastball to get out of trouble, had this bowel-locking curveball, you can see Belt's brain totally freeze on that. In fact, the only Cole that was getting hit this game was his son in the stands, who was getting absolutely lit up in imaginary baseball. But that's probably because he had his glove on his wrong hand. Dylan Cease had these filthy sliders in 5Ks and 4 innings, but did give up 3 runs and struggled a little bit. He was outdueled by yesterday's filthiest starting pitcher of the day, Shane McClanahan. McClanahan had an amazing outing with 32 whiffs on 49 swings in only 88 pitches. This is the first time in the StatCast era that anybody has had 30 whiffs or more in under 100 pitches ever. And he had 32 in 88 pitches. That's a 65% whiff rate for the game. His changeup got 14 whiffs on 16 swings. And looking at these changeups, it's no wonder. Absolute cartoon-like movement. Shane also had his 99-mile-an-hour fastball, his curveballs, and sliders. And when you have to face all of that, plus that insane changeup, well... It's going to be a long day for you and a ton of whiffs. Here's an overlay that shows how McClanahan tunnels his fastball and changeup. And you can see why that'd be so tough on a hitter. You're geared up to hit that fastball. Instead, you get a changeup that runs away from you. Interestingly, the record for whiffs in a game, well, since we've been measuring it, is Pedro Martinez against the Devil Rays. And he had an incredible changeup going that day and had an amazing 37 whiffs over nine innings. I talked to Shane about pitch tunneling and his changeup grip, and here's some of our conversation. All it is to me is a modified circle change, because if all I had to do is put the circle like that, and, and it's a circle change. So all it is, it just helps me out. I just throw it like a fastball. All it is to me is if I, if all I had to do is put the thumb there, and it's, it's just a weird circle change. Do you think about tunneling it? So you mentioned that you may yeah. have it go a certain way. Is that something that the that the Rays preach or something that you figured out works for you? Well, I, you know, obviously I think tunneling is an important part for any pitcher. And, uh, you know, I, I think um, like different, different angles of, you know, the depth or run, they might work better with certain hitters, you know, uh, maybe more run to this guy because he stands a little more off the plate or, you know, this guy crowds it, let's, let's sink it. And uh, yeah, I think, I think tunneling and, you know, pitch sequencing is just as important too as tunneling. And, um, yeah, so I think that's just, it's it, like, like Scherzer said, it's a feel pitch, y you know, you're going to lose the feel sometimes. And some days you're just hoping to get it in the zone and some days you're able to put it on an ass ass. And, you know, it, it's just one of those things. Now onto my filthiest relievers, Brian Abreu had these sliders. Jason Adam had this slider and change up. Alex Young had this change up and sinker. Adbert Alzali had this slider. Brandon Hughes had these fastballs and got pumped up. Daniel Bard made his return and had this slider and fastball. Sir Anthony Dominguez had these nasty sliders. Penn Murphy had this absolutely painted sweeper. Gregory Soto had this wicked 89-mile-an-hour slider. Will Vest had this changeup. Cue the saxophone. Alexis Diaz had this 97-mile-an-hour fastball. Simeon Woods Richardson got two bend the knees here. Devin Williams had this UFO airbender. Johan Ramirez had these sick two seamers. Look at the movement on those. Clay Holmes had this bowling ball turbo sinker. Araldus Chapman threw these flames, 103 mile an hour fastballs again from Chapman. Kendall Graveman had these disgusting two seamers. Yanir Cano had these amazing change-ups. Look at the movement on these things. My man is filthy. He's quickly becoming a force in the Orioles' bullpen. And I love the Chapman-like stare-down after the K. But my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Matt Brash. 
Take a look at these ridiculous sliders. When you're getting swings like that on pitches, you know they're disgusting. And to show you how hard it is to hit Matt Brash, here's an overlay of his 97 mile an hour fastball with that slider. And good freaking luck. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. It's a little dancing security guard action to start your Sunday off right. What is up, everybody? My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start off with Grayson Rodriguez for 6Ks or more, then take Reed Detmers for 6Ks or more, and top it off with you Darvish for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 